Many baseball players have unfortunately passed during the height of their careers, but perhaps none of them through a manner as absolutely bonkers as Leonard Koenigke. Born to a railroad worker in 1904, Koenigke actually didn't play much baseball growing up. As a young adult, he found himself working for the very same company that employed his father. Koenigke got his first career opportunity while on the job when he met former minor leaguer Murray Boyle, who was currently managing a team in nearby Escanaba. A stop on the railway, Koenigke worked. After years of playing for various minor league teams, Koenigke's major league career would have officially began on April 12, 1932. He would go 0-4 in his first career start for the New York Giants. Despite some eventual good games, Koenigke would continue to fail at meeting his expectations. The first major bump of his career with the Giants came with the sudden retirement of team manager John McGraw, whose replacement disliked Koenigke. After facing quickly diminishing playtime, Koenigke would be sent back down to the minors on June 9th. Returning in September after promising performances in the minors, Koenigke's path would once again fall cold. This was the last straw for the Giants, who sold his contract to the international League's Buffalo Bison. Later, the Brooklyn Dodgers came knocking with a new major league contract. Koenigke was instructed to report to the Dodgers upon completion of the International League season. Unfortunately, by the time his team was eliminated in the late September postseason, the Dodgers' major season had already concluded. Though Koenigke did end up playing for the Dodgers in 1934 and did manage to produce career-high numbers, his good fortune would be short-lived. As for the start of the 1935 season, Koenigke struggled with weight and foot issues. After failing to reach the highs of 1934, the Dodgers would cut Koenigke on September 15th, 1935. Koenigke would be given one last paycheck by the team and was then on his own to return home. After one normal flight and a second flight ending with him being restrained and removed, Koenigke would have to result to chartering a third and final flight home. However, by this point, he had become drunkenly belligerent and started a fight midair. Upon attempting to take control of the craft, pilot William McQueenie struck Koenigke over the head several times with a fire extinguisher. The plane would land and McQueenie would be tried for manslaughter. However, this did end without criminal charges. Koenigke would die unable to reach the levels he seemed so capable of.